Back in the day, the BBC used to create comedies that entertained, such as Only Fools and Horses. All right, play it nice and cool, son. Nice and cool, you know what I mean? <laughs> Red Dwarf. I'm up to Red Alert. Uh, sir, are you absolutely sure? It does mean changing the bulb. <laughs> Faulty Towers. I ask what you were expecting to see out of a talky hotel bedroom window? <laughs> Sydney Opera House, perhaps? Bottom. <laughs> the young ones. You took your time, you bastard! Dad's army. It's so wild. Your name will also go on the list. <laughs> what is it? Don't tell him, Pike. The office. Huh? Clumsy. Are you being served? Good morning, madam. Are you being served? Just having a look. So is he. <laughs> hello, hello, etc., etc. Are you expecting us by any chance? <laughs> what does he say? I don't know. I don't speak English. I know the BBC license fees are squandered on shows that can only push the corporation's woke agenda on shows like Shrill. I give you what passes for comedy at the BBC. A young white woman, betrayed as an imbecile, goes to a hairdresser and asks for dreadlocks. The smug black female hairdresser tells her why she can't have them, explains the concept of cultural appropriation, and brimming with righteousness, she kicks her out. Cue laughter. The nodding of heads and praise from the social media clapping seals. Is that scene in Shrill really comedy? Belittling another person because they think that is appropriate for that someone to have a particular hairstyle? No, of course not. Fucking preaching a perceived cultural no no isn't comedy. Christ, even Davy Brent's cringe seems benign compared to these talentless hacks who virtual signal their bullshit ideology on shrill. These idiots aren't interested in creating entertainment and using their characters to make points about societal issues. Like say, Till Death Does Do A Part in the 1970s. Those writers were smart enough to keep the laughs coming amongst the points they wanted to make smells that you won't be safe you'll be in for a hot time oh, yeah. <laughs> and if the copper smell what you're going to be smoking mate you'll be in for a long time unfortunately the writers at the bbc can't grasp that simple idea in these trying times where everybody could do with a bit of a chuckle to relieve some stress and yes laughing does have a positive effect on your mood watching faulty towers in the late 70s during strikes on power cuts cheered up my family. However, I shall expect a reduction. Why? Because Krakatoa is not erupting at the moment? Or so, BBC, how about some comedy that entertains? No? What a shocker. The BBC have been sucking on the public teat for decades. And I, for one, have grown sick of their attitude of fuck entertainment we are making programmes that you will like. Well, I don't. So, the middle finger to the assholes of the BBC. And I'm counting the days when that crappy organisation will be finally removed from the public purse strings. If you like the content, please subscribe. Hit the like button and notification bell for new content. I ask what you were expecting to see out of a talky hotel bedroom window? <laughs> Sydney Opera House, perhaps? The Hanging Gardens of Babylon?